Hello, Oscillator Sync here. At the start of the year, I put out uh, my third patch pack for the Volker FM, which was called FM Does Analog. And I just wanted to start off this video by saying thank you so much, you guys, for uh, checking out those patches and for the really lovely feedback you've been getting. And especially to those of you out there who have been using these patches in your jams. Like, as I mentioned in, in that video, it just gives me such a buzz to see the patches getting used. So, yeah, if you are out there using them, make sure you are tagging me in the videos or on Instagram or whatever. I'm just at Oscillator Sync on most stuff. I just can't thank you enough for, for checking the patches out and using them. Now, with that in mind, um, while I was making the patches, there were a, a couple of techniques that I kept on coming back to to try and get that sort of analog character in the FM mold. Uh, so what I want to do in this video with you is share with you my three top tips for getting analog characteristics into your FM patches. Uh, so without further ado, on with tip number one. Now, as we know, FM is a digital form of synthesis. It's basically mathematical algorithms. Uh, what that means is as, as long as the, um, the digital processor can keep up with the maths, we can do whatever we want. So that means that we can make things happen very, very fast. We can make things very, very extreme harmonically. And as long as that the, the processor is keeping up with the maths, you know, we can do it. And when the processor can't keep up with the maths, the aliasing and digital artifacts that come in are quite sort of distinctive and hard and, and contribute to that kind of what we kind of sometimes talk about, that digital hardness. On the other hand, analog electronics are really inefficient and kind of crummy and slow. The thing is, that crummy slowness is kind of what we like about them. Things happen comparatively gradually. We can't generate as much harmonic content, especially in the upper part of the, uh, the frequency spectrum. And when analog electronics can't keep up, they slew and they, they gradually move into a type of distortion which is very pleasing to us. What that means in practice when we're putting together patches in FM when we want to make them sound analog is that if we go in all guns blazing and we have all of the numbers very high, we're going to be creating very extreme sounds that are very characteristically digital. If we want to create something more analog sounding, we have to approach the program with a little bit more nuance and try and keep away from the upper ends, the extremes of all of the parameters and moderate ourselves and, and bring them a bit closer to the center. So let's take a look at how we might uh, approach that. So I've got um, in this patch here a really sort of characteristically FM uh, sound. Uh, by the way, I will put the starting points for all of these patches as shareable uh, patch links in the description of this video if you want to play along at home. So let's take a look at this patch as it stands. <laughs> Okay, so I've kind of gone out of my way to create as much of an FM sounding patch as I possibly can. And, and really, there's, there's not a lot that's clever going on here. But what you will notice is that in a lot of cases, a lot of these sliders are right up near the top. So stuff like our operator output level, our envelopes tend to be towards the extremes. Um, although this frequency course uh, here isn't turned up that high, that's kind of fairly high in its way. Uh, so. This is actually algorithm five, which means we've essentially got three voices going on at once. So I'm just going to turn off two of those voices. And we'll just listen to operator one and two. So again, really, really super FME, right? So what can we do to try and make this uh, a little bit more analog sounding? So first thing that we can talk about is this frequency control. In almost all the patches that I put together, um, when I was setting up my modulators, uh, so operator 2 is modulating operator 1. My course would be pretty close to where the uh, operator for the carrier was. If not, indeed, lower in a lot of cases. Okay, so immediately that is a... That's more of a, 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 an analog kind of sound. But there's still probably too much harmonic content going on there. And it may not sound it at this point, but this is something I kept coming back to, is that your modulator levels really do need to be more chilled out. Okay, so that, that's that's a more mellow kind of analog sound. What's next? Well, uh, the next thing to talk about is our envelopes. So when we talk about a snappy envelope on uh, an analog synth, um, FM laughs in the face of that idea because FM can really get ridiculously snappy. Um, 
and when we have our right here at 90 um, it, it's just just too fast if you listen to the attack of this it's almost unnaturally fast now in my experience in general anything between about 70 and 90 will perceive as more or less an instant onset it's a bit softer now it still feels instant but it's softer and we can perhaps do the same with our uh, modulator as well Let's just slow it down a bit and same on our release as well we need to be a little bit more conservative still on our release so maybe go around 60-ish so that's a lot more sort of analog and chilled and we can kind of take the same similar sort of approaches with our other operators to get them closer to something that we might uh, consider a bit more analog and we'll slow down these envelopes by lowering our rates maybe a little bit more harmonic content there there we go you can really remember what that, that first bit is and maybe at this point we can say well hey let's layer that sort of analog sound with the fm sound but um for this video let's Let's bring things down a bit. You'll also probably find that there are certain uh, frequencies which, uh, frequency relationships which will sound more analog as well. So let's get this. And just slow it down a bit on here as well. Now obviously this is a very different patch to the one that we started out with, but it is also a lot sort of more mellow and analog sounding. The other thing that you uh, might find um, in these cases is that uh, actually how far you jump on your envelopes can make things sound a bit unnatural as well. So here we're jumping um, not that fast, but we're jumping quite a way down on our level. So we might find that actually get a more natural sound especially on our modulators if we don't actually jump down as far as well all of these little tweaks kind of help to contribute to a more rounded kind of analog kind of sound however at the moment it doesn't sound like super analog that's because there are some other tricks that we might want to apply which brings me on to tip number two so this tip is all about introducing wobble. Now, FM synths, uh, as we mentioned, algorithmic, digital, and because of that sort of mathematical background, they're also very, very stable and reproducible. You know, maths doesn't start to break down very easily, and one plus one is always two, and, and pretty much every time that you hit a key on an FM synth, presuming that the patch hasn't changed, uh, you're going to get that same sort of sound coming out. It's very, very stable and reproducible. On the other hand, analog synths with their VCOs, their voltage-controlled oscillators, they're actually inherently pretty unstable. Even the ones that are uh, very well designed are going to be affected by the way that there might be fluctuations in the electricity supply or, or by temperature, possibly even by humidity in some cases. Uh, and all of those sort of changes create these subtle drifts between the VCOs, which means that even two VCOs which start out being perfectly in tune will slightly detune from each other, and they'll slightly detune from each other at different rates, and it creates this instability within the sound, which means that every time we hit the key, it's not really the same sound. Now, that sounds like it's a diss against analog synths, and it's a massive amount of praise for FM synths, but in a way, it's kind of the opposite. The human ear doesn't really like that strict repetition. The human ear likes variation. It doesn't like to hear this sort of unnatural, precise repetition because that doesn't really exist in nature. So um, what we want to do with this trick is we want to create that sort of subtle detuning and wobble that 
kind of equates to sort of warmth and interest on our analog synths. Uh, so I've got this uh, little patch uh, here, it's a little pad, let's take a listen. Okay, so um, at the moment we are working with Algorithm 4, which is kind of two um, towers of operators, uh, two carriers, one and four, and then you've got uh, a modulator for each of those, and then a modulator modulating the modulator. Now, the fact that we've got multiple modulators feeding into a single carrier is important, and we'll come to that in just a second, but let's talk about Wobble. Now, obviously we've got an LFO here, and we can apply a bit of pitch modulation, which is going to create this wobble in our, in our patch, and that's it's kind of nice, uh, and it's kind of contributed a bit of sort of interest and warmth, but the thing that's happening here is that um, both of our operators that are making up this sound are being uh, wobbled by the same amount at the same time, which means that there's not this interaction happening between the two um, uh, operators. So we'll come back to the uh, pitch modulation because we can use it on top of what we're going to talk about here. So the next thing that we could talk about maybe is straight up detune. Also we have this detune parameter on our operators. So perhaps if we detune one of our um, carriers, we've gained a certain richness and we could probably even take it further and, and start introducing fine tune to really get some some beating and movement happening. And that's pretty cool, but again, this uh, amount of detune is not changing over time. So although we're getting that beating and richness happening within our patch, it's not a dynamic sound. What we want to do is introduce um, a dynamic sound so that the detune is not consistent between the two voices of our patch. So I mentioned earlier that we've got these sort of twin towers of um, uh, operators. At the moment, I've got operator 3 and operator 6 turned off. Uh, operator 2 is creating our sort of harmonic interest, uh, as is operator 5. So, here's something that we can do with operator 3. So you can see here that my operator mode is fixed. So what this means is that Rather than the um, frequency of the operator changing as we play different notes on the keyboard, this operator is going to sit and um, oscillate at the same frequency. Or to put it another way, this is an LFO. Or whether it's an LFO if we have our course uh, frequency turned down far enough. As you turn it up, it becomes it introduces FM, but it's fixed FM, um, which is a useful effect. But what I'm interested in here is, okay, well, let's set this to an LFO. So if we've got an operator here that's acting as an LFO and we're talking about frequency modulation and it's feeding into operator 2, what we're going to get here is a slow detuning of operator 2. So this is a pitch LFO that is only being uh, affecting uh, one of our two voices. So if we turn on operator 3 now, Yeah, that's quite different to the effect that we had when all we were doing was um, adding detune to our carriers or, or indeed fine um, uh, frequency tweaks. That's not the same sound each time. That's subtly evolving as we go on. Now, as it happens, I've also done the same trick here on operator six, which is at the top of our other tower of uh, operators. Again, fixed. But what's crucial here is that I've also set it to a different frequency. So this means that the uh, drift on our two operators are happening at different frequencies, which means that that relationship gets even more complex. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like. Cool, right? Now, uh, when we're using our operators, our modulators in this way, uh, with the fixed uh, mode here, and we're using them as uh, pitch LFOs, the operator output level is essentially our um, LFO depth, if you like. So if we turn this one all the way down, we end up only with one of our operators getting modulated. But as we turn it up, we start to get more and more wobble happening.
we can push this and get a bit seasick and you kind of start to get this chorusing and phasing that you can't really get any other way. Now, if you're feeling particularly uh, sassy, you can even turn on your pitch LFO and get three layers of this pitch drift and get these very complicated, rich, wobbly sounds happening. Now, one other uh, little trick that I wanted to point out with this technique, because uh, I used this in one of the patches, possibly more than one, but there's certainly one patch in, in particular, um, the patch in the FM Design Log patch called Uno Bass. I do this trick. Um, I think it's probably the same setup here with the two um, two towers of, op uh, of uh, operators. If you look here on operator three, which is essentially our spare LFO, I've actually got the key velocity sense turned up and similarly here on operator six and that means that i can actually use the velocity slider to uh, introduce this wobble uh, in real time so if i turn the velocity slider down so here we've just got the pitch lfo i'll turn that off so you can hear a bit clearer so if we turn off the pitch lfo we've got that sort of static sound as i turn up the velocity slider start to introduce that detune and wobble, which can be a really neat performance element. So we've looked at trying to be a bit more moderate and, and now we've looked at how we can introduce uh, some additional richness. So let's move on with tip number three. So this final tip is about feedback. Now, I don't think there is a single patch in the uh, FMNAS analog patch pack where I wasn't using feedback within my programming. Basically, what feedback does is it takes the output of one carrier, uh, sorry, one operator in an algorithm and it feeds some of the signal back to an earlier point in the algorithm. Now, on most of the, um, most of the algorithms, that feedback basically is one, the output of one operator feeding back into itself. And that creates certain types of sounds. And I certainly made use of that in uh, programming these patches. But there are two really special algorithms. That's algorithm four and algorithm six. And the reason that these are special algorithms is that the feedback loop is more complex. So in the case of algorithm six, you've got operator six modulating operator five, and then you've got feedback coming back from that point back up into operator six. And in uh, algorithm four, you've got a tower of um, six modulating five modulating four, which is the carrier, and then the output of four can be fed back right up to the top of that tower. Now, feedback can introduce, well, almost unbearable noise, essentially, in, in a lot of cases. But this kind of goes back to the um, moderation uh, tip. If you are using the other operators in that feedback loop, with a certain level of moderation and you start to introduce feedback, you can get some absolutely fantastic sounds. So uh, this um, this patch that I've got here is algorithm four. So this is the um, most complex um, operator feedback arrangement that we've had. Uh, just for simplicity's sake, I have turned off operators one, two, and three, and we're just looking at operators four, five, and six. Four is our carrier, five and six are modulating it, and then we've got a situation where the output of four can be fed back into operator six. Now, at the moment, it is not. So let's take a listen to our patch. <laughs> Okay, so it's kind of a funky bass sound. It's it's pretty chill at the moment. Now, if we were thinking about an analog synth, we might think, well, it'd be great to open up that filter if, if it was an analog synth and get more sort of uh, rasp and drive from the sound. Now, sometimes you might think, well, let's just turn up the um, operator output level. But unfortunately, if we do that, things just start sounding... There's some points here where it's kind of workable, but in the, in the main, it just starts sounding really FME, which we don't really want. 
Now, if we contrast that by introducing feedback, the character that we get is a little bit different. So not a lot to begin with. Just starting to get a bit more buzz. Can you hear that? Go a bit further. It's starting to sound almost like resonance on a filter, right? And get pretty buzzy. Now it might be that we've now got this this operator turned up too high, so we can just pull it back a bit. So things are getting pretty filthy, and actually, right at the top, we end up getting basically distortion. Now, can you hear that kind of harsh buzziness? That sort of upper sort of rasp? That's pretty FME, and I don't really want that. So, uh, again, we can come back to our operator levels, and we can just sort of moderate them a little bit. We can kind of get sort of almost like a combination of drive and filter resonance. If we slow down some of these envelopes, maybe get them to drop a bit further. Things are sound pretty cool. You add a bit of key velocity sense to that so we can jam out a bit on our velocity slider. We've kind of got ourselves this sort of combination drive resonance filter control. Now again, we might not want to get quite so much fizziness. And certainly, just dialing that feedback back a little bit. We get a real nice little sort of resonant peak to the sound. Now, in this uh, much more complex um, relationship that we've got here in our um, feedback loop, we can get even more complexity out of the sound if we just detune one of our operators as well. Almost like uh, chorusy organ tones. Probably a bit too much. If we compare that there to that there, we've kind of got free chorus and buzz, and it's it's just a really cool sound. So yeah, feedback, feedback on everything if you're trying to get these sort of more analog sounds even used more conservatively just adds that little bit of rasp that just makes your patches cool so those are my three top tips for getting analog character into your fm patches i hope that was interesting and useful if it was make sure you hit the thumbs up on this video and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming videos on uh, synthesis i also hope you've been uh, enjoying the january jams that i've been posting uh, this month obviously because this month is january um it's been really fun to get back to to doing lots of jams which is what i started the uh, the channel for in the first place anyway and uh, i've been having some really lovely uh, responses to those so um thank you guys for checking those out in the next month, um, I uh, hope to put out a couple more tutorials, uh, a couple more uh, patches from scratch on the Volcraft FM. We also need to finish off talking about some of the key concepts like feedback in the Understanding Sound Design uh, series. I'd also maybe like to put out another patch pack uh, for the Volcraft FM. Um, I'm trying to do themed patch packs. Um, so if you've got a theme that you'd like me to take a look at, then uh, let me know in the comments below. And obviously, uh, it's just been NAM, so I am plotting purchases uh, for this year. Um, there's one thing that was announced at NAM that I uh, am very, very excited about, and I, th I think is probably a, an instant buy for me uh, when they become available. Um, there's another thing that I'm thinking of buying that wasn't announced at NAM, actually, and was announced a little bit earlier, uh, but it's been sort of playing on my mind, so... Um, maybe you'll see a couple of new synths on the channel soon that you can check out and I'll be sure to be doing lots of videos with them when I get them. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I will see you again soon. Bye bye.